There's always big news coming from outer space. Scientists and researchers are studying Mars extensively, discovering new types of supernovas and finding neutron star and black hole pairings. But for the rest of us humans, there isn't anything quite as exciting as the possibility of life on other planets. So far, we haven't heard of any confirmed alien sightings on other planets, but there may actually be signs of life near Saturn. Yep, according to scientists, the favorite planet of many children, because of its rings, obviously, could have some microbes on one of its many moons. Welcome to Space World. In today's video, we are going to talk about the existence of life on Saturn and when can humans possibly catch a flight there. So if you want to know more about it, then stay with us until the end of the video. The human exploration of the solar system will not stop at the Moon and Mars. For those interested in space exploration, the question is only when rather than if our descendants will spread throughout the solar system. For now, scientists have researchers have their eyes on Saturn. The icy crust enveloping Saturn's moon, Enceladus, has long fascinated astronomers. Evidence collected by NASA and the European Space Agency's Cassini-Huygens spacecraft suggests that the shell could be hiding a massive subsurface ocean made up of briny water underneath it, which tantalizingly could potentially harbor life. But Enceladus doesn't seem like a prime place for microscopic life given its icy outer surface. However, just beyond that layer, is an ocean-like slush with a seafloor with hydrothermal vents. That watery substance sometimes breaks through its cold shell in water plumes similar to a geyser erupting on Earth. Further evidence comes from NASA's Cassini space probe, which has studied the ringed planet and its moons to discover carbon dioxide and dihydrogen too. So, what does this mean? it's likely that microbes might be hanging out down there. Of course, this isn't a full-stop conclusion, which Regis Ferrier, co-lead author of this study, explains in the research that's published in Nature Astronomy. According to a new study by a team from the University of Arizona and Paris Sciences and Les University published in the journal Nature Astronomy recently, Cassini's observations that found Enceladus is expelling plumes of methane gas suggests that the moon's subsurface oceans may be habitable to Earth-like microorganisms. We wanted to know could Earth-like microbes that eat the dihydrogen and produce methane explain the surprisingly large amount of methane detected by Cassini, asked Regis Ferrier an associate professor at the University of Arizona and a lead author of the study in a statement. But figuring out the answer for sure is far from easy. Searching for such microbes known as methanogens at Enceladus's seafloor would require extremely challenging deep dive missions that are not in sight for several decades, he added. If we look back in time a little, then in 2005, NASA's Cassini Saturn Orbiter discovered geysers blasting particles of water ice into space from tiger stripe fractures near Enceladus's South Pole. That material, which forms a plume that feeds Saturn's E-ring, which is the planet's second outermost ring, is thought to come from a huge ocean of liquid water that sloshes beneath the moon's icy shell. And there's more than just water ice in the plume. During numerous close flybys of the 313-mile-wide Enceladus, Cassini spotted many other compounds as well. For example, dihydrogen and a variety of carbon-containing organic compounds, including methane. Therefore, the team constructed mathematical models to see if methanogenesis could account for the data collected by Cassini. According to their conclusion, microbial hydrothermal vent activity, or processes that would involve extraterrestrial microorganisms, could explain the methane detected by Cassini. The authors then ran the model to see whether a given set of chemical conditions, such as the dihydrogen concentration in the hydrothermal fluid and temperature, would provide a suitable environment for these microbes to grow. 
They also looked at what effect a hypothetical microbe population would have on its environment. For example, on the escape rates of dihydrogen and methane in the plume. Comparing this with Earth, on Earth, hydrothermal activity is caused by cold seawater dipping into the ocean floor, where it gets warmed up by local sources of heat like magma. This water then gets expelled out of vents in the ocean floor, a process that drips methane into the water over time. Most of this methane is released by microorganisms that use the heat as a source of energy, turning carbon dioxide into methane. According to their computer simulations, the researchers found that similar conditions could exist on Enceladus. In summary, not only could we evaluate whether Cassini's observations are compatible with an environment habitable for life, but we could also make quantitative predictions about observations to be expected should methanogenesis actually occur at Enceladus's seafloor, Ferrier said in the statement. However, scientists and researchers simply don't have enough data to go off of just yet. The researchers also didn't rule out other possible abiotic processes that could explain the methane data. For instance, the chemical breakdown of primordial organic matter in the moon's core could be causing significant amounts of methane to be ejected. So, while the research doesn't confirm that life exists on Enceladus, it does reveal that microbes are one possible explanation for the high amounts of methane. However, further research will be needed in order to determine whether there is, in fact, life on Saturn's moon. Now, let's come to the most important question of all. When can humans fly to Saturn? Considering the recent discoveries and possibilities of life on the planet, scientists believe that Saturn could prove to be suitable for living. However, providing a proper timeline for landing is a bit difficult to predict for now, and it is the main focus of scientists and researchers. Their approach is highly theoretical, but it is likely more accurate than previous estimates, and it gives a reasonable idea of when we could expect to see humans in the outer solar system. The latest they think we could reach the Saturnian system is 2153, so it's like a whole century away. But what are the reasons for this huge delay? How to even start such a calculation is complicated, so it's best to start at the basics, which in this case involves a bit of calculus. To understand when humans will reach further out in the solar system, the authors needed two variables, distance and time. In this case, distance is defined as the distance from Earth that humans have traveled, and time is defined as having started at the beginning of the space race in 1957, when no human had yet left Earth. And this is it for today, guys. What are your thoughts on today's video? Share your views with us in the comments below. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and ring the bell icon for more amazing videos about space. And thank you for watching.